I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And in a lot of the cases that we cover and trials, very recently, as a matter of fact, we've heard a lot about one of our amendments, number five, the Fifth Amendment. And when I say the Fifth, I know what you think of. No, 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 not Jack Daniels. No, what you think of is the right to remain silent, right? We all say, yeah, he took the Fifth. She took the Fifth. He's not going to talk. Take the Fifth. They arrest you. Take the Fifth. Don't say Absolutely, that is part of the Fifth Amendment. But there's another part to the Fifth Amendment. Let me read it to you. Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of limb or life, life or limb. What's that all about? That's about double jeopardy. It means our forefathers were, were smart enough to put it in our Constitution that you don't get punished more than once for the same crime. Seems fair, seems right. It's in our Constitution. This is, this is big. This is huge, okay? We don't try people in this country twice for the same crime. Now, let's talk about Jesse Smollett. You saw him right here on the show last night, live being released from the Cook County Jail. He's got an appeal pending. And, and we got a real uh, sneak peek at what the main argument is going to be and perhaps the strongest argument from his defense team. And it all has to do with that Fifth Amendment. No, not the right, not the right to remain silent, but the, the right to be tried only once for a crime. This case has a bizarre, an extremely bizarre, and it played out publicly, procedural history. And I'll tell you what, uh, last night his attorney spoke uh, afterwards, and we listened to them. And they said a couple of things. One, um, they were claiming Jesse Smollett's innocence in the case. I'm like, okay, I'll take that with a grain of salt. You got to say that. You're his attorneys. But then they issued a challenge. And I found this really the most fascinating part of what they were saying last night. It was like directed at kind of like people like me, although we didn't cover the trial when it happened. Uh, because they didn't let cameras in, and we were in the midst of other big, big cases here on Court TV. Um, but he really was sending it to everyone who had covered this trial and this case uh, from the beginning, the media, saying, you guys missed the boat on what the real problem is in this case. It's that he was punished once already for this conduct, for what he did. And then there was a second prosecution like I just read to you in, in, in the Constitution. Not, we're not supposed to do that in this country. So this is a, a real, real issue. And you could see it in his eyes as he spoke, his attorney. There was a passion. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes defense attorneys, we're going to have some on tonight, you know, sometimes they can put on a little bit of a show, right? This wasn't a show. This was, this was real when he was talking about this particular issue. Take a listen. Let me make something clear. There is no room for politics in our court system and our appellate courts in this great state do not play politics. Let me make something clear. When this case was initially re-indicted, when this case was prosecuted, when this case was sentenced, at each of those steps, I wondered to myself whether Chicago has seceded from the union. Because in this country, in this country, you cannot punish a person twice. And while everyone was focused on the sensationalism surrounding this case, people were not focused on the constitutionality of the prosecution. And we've been trying to tell everyone that. It is unconstitutional to charge someone twice. Mr. Smollett paid a $10,000 fine. Let me repeat it again, because our appellate courts are listening. Paid a $10,000 fine and did community service. Now, there is no time machine to go back in time to undo those things. His $10,000 fine hasn't even been returned to him, right? And then you reindict the case and you give him 30 months probation for a class four felony with a man with no criminal record, felony record. 30 months probation, you give him 150 uh, days in jail, you give him what else? Uh, 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 you make him do um, 
uh, restitution of $120,000, and then you give him the maximum fines. You know, and there's something wrong with that. Apparently, any citizen in Chicago, if they want to, if they don't like the decision that this duly elected official makes, can saunter into the courtroom and ask for a special prosecutor. I hope every citizen of Chicago realizes how important this case is, because this could be you. You may think, oh, that's ridiculous. I would never do these things that he's accused of. But you can definitely be charged for something you didn't do. You should never, ever be charged again for something that you had already been prosecuted for. It's important. Do not minimize it. It's not a joke. I hope the media would actually, instead of leaving here today and reporting about how he walked out and what, report on the constitutionality. Should the press, the number one defenders of the Constitution, the fourth arm of government, should you be standing by reporting on how, oh, I think this is crazy, Jussie did this, maybe he did this, as opposed to standing there and asking yourselves in your newsroom, is this right? Could this happen to any one of us? Could someone come by and say, hey, listen, listen, guys, I grew up in Nigeria under military rule. It's dangerous. We're playing with fire. The idea that a person can be charged twice, report that. Talk about that. The appellate court took a look at our motions. We submitted it to them. Focus. Stop focusing on sensational stuff. This, these are not tabloid papers. Focus on the real stuff. Is it right for a person to be punished twice? All right, I grew up in New Jersey, so when you challenge me, I'm going to accept that challenge. And, and that's what we're going to do tonight. Now, when we talk about, you know, issues like this, there's really two pieces to it, right? When we, when we make arguments, it's about the facts and then the law, right? Well, the law tonight is going to be really the Constitution, double jeopardy, is, you know? But you've got to understand what the facts are in the case to figure out about what happened here. So let's try to get to the bottom of some of the facts because I don't think it's 100% clear tonight, but it'll be clearer in just a moment because Core TV legal correspondent Joy Lim Nakrin is with us and has been going through everything related to this uh, crazy procedural history in this case. So he's making allegations and you know, when you listen to him, it seems to make some sense, yeah. right? right? And, and it has nothing to do with the guilt or innocence of this guy. It has to do with whether or not he was punished once already. So what happened in this initial first prosecution? What were you able to figure out? Here? Okay, so this is a really, really complicated procedural history, like you pointed out. So initially, remember that this was Kim Fox's office who was handling the prosecution, and then there were these, these kind of rumors surfaced that Kim Fox was a relative of Jussie Smollett, which she says isn't true, that Kim Fox was in communication with Jussie Smollett, which again, she says wasn't true. So she ended up recusing herself. And by the way, you know, she had made statements that she thought it was overcharged uh, internally to her office. But about a week after she recused herself, uh, and, and the timeline, by the way, a lot of this is stated in the prosecution's objection to the emergency motion. They address a lot of this. Then the prosecutor's office actually obtained the jury indictment about a week after her recusal on 16 counts of disorderly conduct. Okay, and then March of 2019, the prosecutor's office then moves to no longer prosecute all, all 16 counts. They basically dis dismiss it, and uh, I guess the Latin phrase is, is nol, nole pro, pros, right? Right, okay. okay. So they decide not to prosecute the case. Uh, under, under what basis? What was the... What was happening at the time? When I was a prosecutor, you know, we indict someone, we want to dismiss the case, well, maybe we put you into a diversionary program, mm. right? Um, we called it PTI in New Jersey. So you, we went in front of a judge, and the judge would say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll hold this whole case in abeyance, you do X, Y, and Z, you do X, Y, and Z, we'll come back in court, and then we'll dismiss it, and you're good to go. It, it, did something like that happen? Well, not not really. And and actually, there's a lot of debate about what did happen between both sides because the state essentially says, okay, at that particular time, there wasn't the evidence that we needed, that we felt was appropriate to go forward with prosecuting, so we didn't prosecute. So we dismissed the charges. But then later on, they come back, they uh, appoint the special prosecutor, they go forward with, with the charges. Wait, okay, so let's, let's, so the first one just gets dismissed because they feel like they don't, so it doesn't get okay. dismissed pursuant to a deal. He's talking about a deal. He said, wait a minute, you dismissed it because um, I paid a fine, meaning Jesse Smollett, 
and I did some community service. That sounds like a deal. Right, it does sound like a deal. It sounds like a plea deal, but that isn't in the court documents. In the, you know, I looked at the court documents, Julia Janae looked at the court documents, many members of our team here at Court TV, that's not in the court documents. What is in the court documents is that there was a $10,000 bond that he paid, and then when the charges were dropped, it's basically like, you can, you can keep this. It's kind of like, oh, okay, drop the charges, keep so the 10000 the the fine that he allegedly paid was just not was, getting his bond back, the $10,000. Right. So it's not a fine, right. according to the state. According to the defense, it was a fine. And so that was a penalty, okay. you know, serving a sentence. And How about the community service? That's another good point. Um, one side says, of course, the state says, you know, he offered, he volunteered to do community service. And the other says it was a form of a sentence, a punishment. So the defense is saying, no, 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 it was a part of the deal, it was the punishment, you have to do community service, whereas uh, the prosecutors now are saying, no, it was like he said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do some, so did he do any community service? He did, is there, he did is there a record service. of it? What, what, how does that, where does that record exist? Yeah, we well, know? well so, so there isn't a dispute about whether he did community service. I guess the dispute is that one side is saying that it was a sentence, essentially, right, as part of a plea deal, and the other side is saying uh, he volunteered to do it. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of in, in Gray area. <laughs> We're in gray area here, factually. Very gray area. Okay. All right. Anything else we need to know about the procedural history here? Well, I think I think that's really the key thing. And so, you know, I mean, like you pointed out, if the guy's already served a sentence, a per se sentence, then there is an issue of double yeah. jeopardy. Then he can't go to trial again and be convicted again, which is what he did. But the but the. The state's it, saying it, no. I can almost pick, it, it's like a backroom deal is what it sounds uh, like. Yes, exactly. It's like a backroom deal. Wow. Okay. All right, Joy Lim Nachman, thank you so much. Let's bring in our think tank tonight in the Bronx, New York, criminal defense attorney Renee Hill. In Houston, Texas, criminal defense attorney Carmen Rowe in green for St. Patty's Day. But I see Frank Sinatra, he's Italian. And in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney and law professor at Emory University and Georgia Innocence Project board member, Molly Palmer. Welcome, everyone. Okay. All right. I tried to set it up for you guys, trying to get to the bottom of it. There are some facts, I guess, in dispute. But what does it sound like to you, Renee Hill? Does it sound like he's being punished twice for the same crime and may be able uh, to make an argument that this second prosecution should be tossed and the whole thing is over? It does indeed sound like that to me, Vinny. It is shades of the Bill Cosby case all over again. It sounds like deals were made, the defendant relied upon those deals, and then they turned around and they re-indicted him and ultimately tried him. And it sounds like double jeopardy might actually be a major issue in this case. And let me say this as well. A lot of people are complaining that he's out now, that, you know, he's only out because he's a celebrity. Bail pending appeal is only granted when the appellate court believes that there are viable issues, that there are issues that have merit. So they have looked at these papers and they've made that determination that there is some meat to what they're saying. And that's why he got bail pending appeal, not because he's a celebrity. That's my opinion of this. Well, yeah, I, I, well. Uh, no, maybe it's not the celebrity, but it's the ability to do what he's doing. And that really comes well, more from the money than the celebrity, right? Because he, 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 he has, but he has, has the ability to, to hire, uh, do you see that legal team he's got? He's got an amazing yeah, legal but he, team. He, he, he has an amazing legal team who is taking the necessary steps to fight for him as they are charged to do as his attorneys, right? Yeah. And so the fact that he has you know, been blessed with the finances from working hard all of his life to be in that position and now use those funds to pay for attorneys to fight for him and point out the issues that every defendant has. Absolutely. I've had clients out on bail pending appeal, non-celebrities and celebrities as well. But it's not because of that. When it comes to the appellate courts, it's not because of the celebrityhood. It's because they want to see viable issues because if they don't, they're not going to grant that bail. Look at R. Kelly. He's, I'm sure he's got more money he, than Justice Smollett. He is, he is infamous. He, he is out. not famous anymore. He was infamous. <laughs> but he, but at that time, he wasn't out on right. bail, and he, he certainly didn't get bail pending appeal after the conviction. Carmen, your thoughts tonight? Is this double jeopardy tonight? 
You know, that's a firm maybe, Vinny. My problem is, is when lawyers come out and tell me that we need to rely on them to determine whether a deal was had or not, and they suggest that a $10,000 bond is somehow a fine, I feel like we're playing a little too fast and loose with the facts on that case. And so the real issue is whether or not they have anything that memorializes a deal here. Because as a defense attorney, the, the community service doesn't move me because I do that for a lot of cases in the hopes of getting a deal. I tell my client to do some things ahead of time, I offer it to a prosecutor, but they don't accept it, then I don't have a deal. So this will come down to those fine detailed facts as to what exactly happened and what those discussions turned into as regards a solid deal. And if they didn't, I think they have a problem when they get to the appellate courts. Uh, Molly, I want your thoughts on this. And, and then I want you to also answer this question. If he wins on this basis, it's game over, right? This this trial, it's over. He's not, it's not like most appeals, you win, you get a new trial. No, he wins this one, it's over. There will not be another trial. If he wins, it's over and it's done, right? So here is what I think this whole thing hinges on. It's the definition of punishment. Sometimes we think about double jeopardy as not being tried for the same offense. Well, that's a different kind of interpretation of the due process clause of the Fifth Amendment. What it also says is that you cannot be punished twice. We see this in multiplicitous charges, duplicitous charges, or in this case, where his attorneys are arguing he already was punished. So if the appellate court interprets the forfeiture of the bond and his community service as punishment, then it's done. He wins. And like you said, Vinny, game over. Wow. Wow. All right. We accepted the challenge. I think we met the challenge. We have some great analysis here, and I think it's really going to hinge on some facts that are not 100% clear. Uh, but what is clear is that the think tanks here the whole hour, Renee Hill, Carmen Rowe, Molly Palmer. Uh, by the way, the latest episode of the court TV.